Hi, Martin. Um, you are one of the founding fathers, if you will, of technical analysis. I wanted to just get a little sense of your journey through the world of technical analysis has brought you to today and to the, um, the new tools that we want to talk about. Um, how did you start and, and how did you get to where we're at? Well, I got started because I worked for a broker and um, up in Canada and their research was really bad. Their fundamental research was really bad. I picked up a copy of Edward to McGee, the classic technical text, of course, and I was really fascinated by it. And from there, it was, it was an, I never stopped learning uh, about technical analysis. And I still learn a lot of stuff today. There's always a lot to be learned. Yes, there is, absolutely. And, and I bet the tools have changed a lot over that period of time, haven't they? No, not that much. I think the method of delivering them certainly has, because we used to have to draw charts by hand, calculate the AD line by hand, and so forth. But now, of course, it's all done automatically. So that's, that's the bit, I think that's a big change. Second big change is that people, because of the intraday trading and so forth, which you didn't have in the 70s and 80s, well, the 70s, um, people have, uh, have got a much shorter time horizon now than they had before. Yeah, so the, um, at this point, you are working hard with uh, market cycles. You've been working on cycles now for many years. Um, there, there's a couple of indicators you've developed to, to help analyze those cycles. and and now you were trying to bring new tools to help show the cycle interactions, right? Correct. So you started out, there was a there was one of your more famous indicators was called the KST. What's what's the quick story behind the KST? Well, that's a that's an indicator that is designed, you know, time uh, price at any one time is determined by the interaction of a number of different cycles. So if we're watching a specific cycle over a specific time frame, like a 14-day RSI or 25 day RSI, that only covers one of those cycles. So I developed an indicator called the KST, which combines four different cycles into one indicator. Ideally it would have a, you know, a hundred different time cycles, but you've got to keep it simple in this business. And so uh, that, that's basically how it, it, it got designed. So in, in other words, what it was trying to do is to un, uh, follow the underlying trend and then because we've got different time cycles, it turns a little bit earlier than say the stochastic sometimes. And that, that gives us a better read of what's going on. It's not a perfect indicator, um, but it does work most of the time. And it's called KST because you know KNOW, it's not a sure thing. Okay, yep, that's true. That's how, um, so the, the KST and, and other things that you've been doing all flow into the concept of, a, of the market flowing through different kinds of cycles. And so you've got long-term cycles and short-term cycles. And so you're working on a new plugin for stock charts ACP, aren't you? That, that kind of attempts to show how these uh, long and short-term cycles uh, interact, right? That's great. I think we've got a a, a diagram of the what I call the market cycle model, and it shows three trends: the long-term trend, the intermediate trend, and the short-term trend. You can see how they're all interrelated. And the idea is with the with the plugin. Uh, part of the, the idea with the plugin is to figure out where we are on that green line, the long-term trend, because that dominates everything. If you're in a bull market, then your short-term overbought conditions aren't going to generate much in the way of a decline. But when, it, when you get to oversold, there's usually a tremendous bounce that takes place, whereas that's quite the reverse in the bear market. So it's very important to try and have some understanding of where you are in the cycle and where the um, specific sector or industry group or stock is that you're monitoring is in that particular cycle. And so the, the other thing about ACP is, or another thing about ACP is how interactive it is. And so how, how are you bringing interactivity into this plugin? Well, you can, you, you'll be able to do three different trends, the long-term, the intermediate, the short-term trend. There'll be a couple of different markets. You could do obviously the U.S. stock market with its industry group breakdown. Uh, you can look at internet, the, the world index and it's, all its components are all the international markets. Do the same thing for commodities and currencies. So there's lots of different ways in which it can be applied, different time frames and different and different markets. Sounds very, very exciting. I know it's not ready quite yet, but it's going to be ready soon. 
Uh, we're working really hard behind the scenes to bring it to everybody. One of the things about ACP plugins that, that this is kind of demonstrating, I think, is the ability for the plugin to capture a, a particular commentator's specific approach to doing analysis and to seeing the charts in the way that they see those charts. So in addition to this plugin, Martin, you're going to be also helping people understand how to use it, right? And, and demonstrating how it's, how it's used over time. You're gonna be using it yourself to follow the markets, right? I, I, I do now. Yes. On an annual basis. So this is gonna uh, speed up work for me and I can, I can retire. <laughs> <laughs> excellent, excellent. Um, can you just give a little background of what roles do cycles play in your analysis as a, as a whole? How important are they and what role do they play? Well, if you're looking at cycles in the sense of the market bottoms every three months or every six months or that kind of thing, not, not a very big role. But if you look at it in the terms of the business cycle, then it plays a big role because I helps determine that big green line that we saw in the, uh, in the diagram earlier, helps you determine where you are in that line and, and, and uh, shows you where, what, the, what the direction is. Because it's very interesting. Back in 1924, there was a guy called Joseph Kitchens, who was an economist, and he noted that there was a 41-month cycle between re recession, between 1870 and 1924. Well, obviously, that's out the window right now because we don't have recessions very often. In fact, we had a, the longest recovery on, on record that just ended earlier this year. But what we do get is a growth slowdown. If you count all the recessions and all the growth slowdowns since uh, 1960, you find that they're separated by about 41 to 42 months. So the cycle is still alive and well. So that's, that's one of the things that I, I really focus on a lot. Fascinating. Yeah, I'm, I'm also myself very, very interested in the cycles. I, I agree. What advice would you have for someone just starting to learn technical analysis um, using stock charts? Well, I think one of the things about one of the great benefits of stock charts is you've got the chart school and you've got a tremendous number of articles on just about everything that's on, on the package. And I, what I rec always recommend people do is, and you've got a number of different indicators in stock charts, far too many that any one person can follow. But somebody starting off probably should go through as many of those indicators as they can and find out the three or four which they feel most comfortable with and start using those and start reading about those in the um, in the chart school. The other thing I'd recommend is I'm pretty lazy, so I like shortcuts. And one of the things you can use, two things you can use in stock charts for shortcuts are the style sheets, or the, uh, the chart styles, I should say, which, which enables you to, to save a specific template and then quickly apply it to the uh, security that you're following. And the second thing is the chart list, which is kind of electronic chart book which you make originally and then you bring it up again and you just press one button and you've got 20 or 30 different charts coming up. And that's, that's how I use stock charts to help save a lot of time. Terrific. Have you had a chance to play with uh, ACP and, and start to use the new, the new tool as well as the old stuff? Yeah, I have. I have. I, I, I'm very impressed with it. Another slide here. So the one with the, um, the four quadrants, long-term yeah. momentum position. Uh, did you want to talk a little about that? Yeah, basically what I'm doing is kind of a, a poor man's um, <clears throat> plug-in, if you will, showing the position of the commodities, bonds, and stocks. And then the next one shows the position of all these items approximately where they were at the 2003 bottom. You can see they're all down in, in the uh, what we call the winter and the spring quarter. And then the 2007 top is shown in the final slide. And there you can see they're all very overextended on the upside there on the, on the right hand part of the chart. And so the idea here is that the plugin will also help you see these same kind of effects? Yes, it will, it will bring them up automatically. That's nice. I'm very excited about seeing that happen kind of interactively and dynamically with real data moving forward. I think it's really gonna help clarify some of these crazy market movements. Yeah, oh, it's, it's it's definitely very helpful. I, I used when I used to do the uh, monthly roundup with Greg, I always put on this. I always put this chart or well, this figure uh, in into the as the last thing we talked about, and, uh, I, and from there on, I just follow. It. I just do it each month now on a manual basis. So the plugin is going to be really useful for me. I don't know if I can afford it, but I'd like to buy it. <laughs> 
Well, Martin, it's wonderful to talk with you always, as always. Um, th I'm looking forward to your plug-in. I'm very excited about this new partnership that we've got going. And thank you very much for helping us uh, tell everyone about ACP and plugins. Thanks, Martin. Thanks, Tim. Hey, Grayson Rose here with Stock Charts. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, consider giving it a like down below. Maybe leave us a comment. And if you're new to the channel, you can subscribe at the link up above. We're going to bring you daily content from an incredible collection of technical analysts and financial experts.